One of my absolute favorite things about living here is the all-you-can-eat buffet of free food that's just lining our banks at low tide. Tide's already come in quite a bit, but there's still lots of cluster, oyster clusters exposed. And uh, these oysters are uh, the, no, known as a keystone species. They're the most important animal to the health of this ecosystem. Uh, for one, in these clusters and all these shells, all kinds of little crabs and shrimp and fish are able to hide. Kind of works like a coral reef. Um, so there's fish, species of fish like sea bass and grouper and snapper that you normally think of uh, only living way out in the deep ocean. They actually spend part of their life cycle back here. And if it were not for these oyster bed communities, they would not have a place to hide to get big enough before they went out into the ocean. Um, another reason why they're so important is, um, and the main reason, is their filtering power. One oyster right here can filter two and a half gallons of water an hour. That's 30 to 50 gallons of water a day per oyster. And imagine the gazillions of oysters along the salt marshes of South Carolina, along the East Coast and Gulf Coast, all the water that they're filtering. It's amazing. So they pump in water right now. They're closed their bivalves, so they've closed up their shell real tight, basically holding their breath. And when the tide comes back in, in just about an hour, right where I'm holding this oyster, these are gonna be covered up by water. The tide's either coming in or going out almost a foot an hour. Um, when they get covered up by water, they're able to crack open their shell just enough to filter the water and they siphon the water goes in their body and out and when it comes out it's much cleaner. These oysters are like the ocean's kidneys and when the tide comes in and floods the salt marsh and goes back out it's cleaner after it gets um, it goes across all these filter feeders here. And so our oysters grow in these clusters all attached to each other and um, there's some big oysters that are good size for eating and there's a lot of small ones. When you harvest oysters, uh, for one, you just need your saltwater fishing license and you go to an area that's designated to pub for the public. They're all over the place and uh, you want to wear thick gloves. You want to wear boots. Don't wear flip-flops like I am. Not very smart, but uh, I forgot my, uh, my boots today. And uh, you want a hammer and you just, you can either break them off with your hand and you throw the biggest oysters in your bucket. It's called culling in place and you leave as much of the shell and other oysters, smaller oysters on the bank. The smaller ones that you had knocked off will continue to grow and um, they will remain there and new oysters will have something to attach to. If you just came and took all these oyster clusters off the bank, there would be nothing for new ones to attach to because the way they grow is there's male and female oysters and um, in, the, in, the, in the warmer months, that's why we can't harvest oysters in the warmer months is they spawn. One oyster will put out millions of eggs and those eggs hatch in the water and they become part of the plankton community, zooplankton, and they're floating around in the water. In the summer there's just gazillions of tiny microscopic oysters, planktonic oysters floating around in the water. If that little microscopic oyster lands on something hard like another oyster shell, it glues itself to it it's stuck there for the rest of its life. At that time, it's called spat. And it starts to grow its shell, and they grow about a half an inch to an inch, of year, inch a year, depending on how productive the area is that it's growing. So I'm going to take that oyster right here. Where did that guy go? Well, we'll just do this one right here. So you need an oyster knife. If I was one of those whelks, I could pry it open with the edge of my shell. If I was a stone crab, I could crunch right through it. But you and I need an oyster knife. So you wedge that in to where that little point comes in there. I crack it open. And then I'm going to sever this abductor muscle. They have an abductor muscle on each side of their shell to open and close their shell. So I cut that. Oyster's laid open. It's got all these cilia on the outside. That's how it's feeding, catching little bits of mostly phytoplankton is what they eat. The stomach is right there. These are its gills, so it breathes. That's the abductor muscle. And oysters are incredibly good for you. Um, the, the Native Americans learned this a long time ago. 
Uh, if you go on any of these barrier islands or marsh hummocks, you're going to find sh either shell rings or shell middens left from the Native Americans. Some date back to thousands of years. Middens are trash piles, but instead of uh, bottles and wrappers and stuff like that, their trash piles are shells, whelks, clams, oysters. Imagine if you're a Native American, walk down to the bank at low tide, all you can eat seafood buffet, just sitting there, real easy to catch. And so um, they got hot, a lot of B vitamins, protein, selenium, calcium, really good for you. And so I'm gonna sample this guy. Mmm, mmm, delicious.